Greeting students, today we are going to learn about one of Britain's leading bank, the Royal Bank of Scotland. Most of us must have heard the name of the company, the Royal Bank of Scotland Group. Let us know this company in a much better way. The Royal Bank of Scotland Group PLC, also known as RBS Group, is a British banking and insurance holding company based in Edinburgh, Scotland. The group operates a wide variety of banking brands offering personal and business banking, private banking, insurance and corporate finance throughout its operates located in Europe, North America and Asia. In the UK and Ireland, its main subsidiary companies are the Royal Bank of Scotland, National Westminster Bank, Ulster Bank, Drummond's Bank and Courts. The group issues bank notes in Scotland and Northern Ireland and as of 2012, the Royal Bank of Scotland is the only bank in the UK still to print a pound one note. Outside the UK, it owns Citizens Financial Group, the eighth largest bank in the United States and from 2004 to 2009, it was the second largest shareholder in the Bank of China itself, the world's fifth largest bank by market capitalization in February 2008. Before the 2008 collapse and the general financial crisis, RBS Group was very briefly the largest bank in the world and for some time was the second largest bank in the UK and Europe, fifth in stock market value and the fifth largest in the world by market capitalization. Subsequently, with a slumbing share price and major loss of confidence, the bank fell sharply in the rankings, although in 2009 it was briefly the world's largest company by both assets, pound 1.9 trillion and liabilities, pound 1.8 trillion. It received significant support from the UK government, which as of September 2013 holds and manages an 81% stake through UK financial investment, UKF. I, although its voting rights are limited to 75% in order for the bank to retain its listing on the London Stock Exchange. The group had a market capitalization of approximately pound 12.2 billion as of 23 December 2011, making it the 32nd largest company on the London Stock Exchange. In addition to its primary share listing on the LSE, the company is also listed on the New York Stock Exchange. The bank traces its origin to the Society of the Subscribed Equivalent Department, which was set up by investors in the failed company of Scotland to protect the compensation they receive as part of the arrangement of the 1707 Acts of Unions. The Equivalent Society became the Equivalent Company in the 1724 and the new company wished to move into banking. The British government received the request favourably as the old bank, the Bank of Scotland, was suspected of having Jacobite sympathies. Accordingly, the new bank was chartered in 1727 as a Royal Bank of Scotland with Archibald Campbell, Lord Ely, appointed its first governor. On 31st May 1728, the Royal Bank of Scotland events the overdraft, one of the most versatile and imaginative innovations in the modern banking. It allows a William Hawke merchant in the High Street, Edinburgh, to take out of his account up to pound one thousand, pound one lakh fourteen thousand five hundred fifteen in today's value, more than he has in it. When everything works and you hit the ball and it just goes exactly where you want it to go, it's just so satisfying. Glass painting is a hobby that I picked up back in school. I like transforming things, so from something that's quite plain into something that's beautiful. One of my main hobbies is fitness training. I hand over responsibility for my fitness once I arrive. For the next hour, I do as I'm told. Netball helps develop um, individuals, it develops skills, it develops teamwork, a passion for winning and success. When I first started in RBS, I couldn't imagine two and a half years later I would be managing a team of 10 people. A Lean Change Agent is a role where you go into different business areas and completely transform them, but working with people rather than doing it to them. You're taught a lot of skills to help support those people and get them through the change curve. My role is leading and motivating um, the team leaders and the rest of the staff. I do feel that the input of myself and my team is invaluable to the changes we can make for our customers. I'm much more confident. 
than I was before I started working with RBS. One of the key points in my role is to, to challenge the way things have always been done, actually thinking, what do our customers need? I'm Kirsty Lyle, I'm 36 and I'm a statutory reporting manager. My name's Meg Lowe, I'm 25 and I work as a business analyst in financial planning. My name's Preeti Chowdhury, I'm 27 years old and I'm a lean change agent. I am Jacqueline Reid, I'm 45 years old and I'm a customer service manager at the Royal Bank of as a condition of the British government purchasing a 81% shareholding in the group, the European Commission ruled that the group sell a portion of its business as a purchase was categorized as state aid. In August 2010, the group reached an agreement to sell 318 branches to Santander, UK, made up of the RBS branches in England and Wales and the NetWest branches in Scotland. Sandander withdrew from the sale on 12 October 2012. In September 2013, the group confirmed it had reached an agreement to sell 314 branches to the Corsair Consortium made up of private equity firms and a number of institutional investors including the Church Commissioners which controls the property and investment assets of the Church of England. The branches incorporating 250,000 small business customers, 1,200 medium business customers and 1.8 million personal banking customers are due to separate it from the group in 2015 as a standalone business. The new company will use the dormant Williams & Glines brand and will trade as an ethical bank. The main reason for redesigning the RBSM infrastructure was that we had content sitting in our web infrastructure that wasn't on our trading infrastructure. We wanted to bring those things together so that when a customer came onto the trading site, they were able to see market data. So we were giving them value-added information at the point where they were trading. All this information was always there. It was always in an environment. It was always there available to them, but it wasn't placed in a way that was easy. To make a wholesale change to the environment and have it up and running for the Monday morning without issue for the client base was the key challenge for us. We found the videos to be highly successful means of addressing the two issues we had. One was to buy, get buy-in from our sales force and to create some excitement around the new product. And we used that commercial to, to kind of give people a teaser of what's going to happen. That side was fantastic. You know, we got calls from other banks going, we're jealous of our, our commercial and what we were doing. We used it in our lobbies and in all the televisions we have in the offices worldwide. So if you came into an RBS office anywhere in the world, you were going to get exposed to this commercial running in the background. And it bought, built up a lot of momentum about what we were doing. The videos for the training were highly successful because they reduced the number of phone calls we were getting for customers. We have thousands of customers, but hundreds of salespeople. So they would not be able to handle thousands of phone calls about what's going on, why are we doing this? We can't have them going to other banks to do their trading. It needed to be slick, new, but easy to use for the client base. I'm very happy to say that we've won two awards from profit and loss this year, um, both about innovation, which is what we were trying to do. We want to be in an innovative, new front end. We want to get the user experience right. And we now have a tool that has significant press around it, has a nice commercial that people are interested in, and they're excited to look at it and excited to get involved in it. And that's what we're looking for. Being able to do a one minute trading video that said, here's what you used to have and this is what you have now, was great for us because we could distribute that to everyone. We knew we could get that simple message across through the video. It's quite hard to describe what an online trading system looks like. And they take a, you know, an iPad, they do a quick video and they show it to them. It's a minute long. And then get the customer's buy-in to see what it looks like without having to build a huge demo infrastructure for that process. So having the video is, you know, don't take my word for it here, take a look at it. It did exactly what we needed. I couldn't have asked for anything more. During Goodwin's tenure as CEO, he attracted some criticism for lavish spending, including on the construction of a Pantry 50M headquarters in Edinburgh, opened by the Queen in 2005, and $500M headquarters in the U.S. began in 2006, and the use of a Dashworld Falcon 900 jet owned by leasing subsidiary Lombard for occasional corporate travel. Revelations that RBS had spent pound 200M on celebrity endorsement also went down badly. In February 2009, RBS reported that while Fred Goodwin was at the helm, it had posted a loss of pound 24.1 billion, the biggest loss in UK corporate history. 
His responsibility for the expansion of RBS, which led to the losses, has drawn widespread criticism. His image was not enhanced by the news that emerged in questioning by the Treasury Select Committee of the House of Commons on 10 February 2009 that Goodwin has no technical bank training and has no formal banking qualification. In January 2009, The Guardian's city editor Julia Finch identified him as one of 25 people who were at the heart of the financial meltdown. Nick Cohen described Goodwin in The Guardian as the characteristic villain of our day who made a pound 20M from RBS and left the taxpayer with an unlimited liability for the cost of cleaning up the mess. An online column by Daniel Gross labelled Goodwin the world's worst banker, a phrase echoed elsewhere in the media. Gordon Prantis MP argued that his knighthood should be revoked as it is, wholly inappropriate and anomalous for someone to read in such a reward in these circumstances. Other members have also frequently been criticized as fat cats over their salary, expenses, bonuses and pensions. So students, we got to know about the various aspects of the Royal Bank of Scotland Group. We went through the company's history to its present market scenario. Hope you must have got useful information about the company. Have a nice day ahead.